Okay, our next presenter is Daniela Qualino. Uh, she is from the University of Modena and Reggio Emilia, often in Modena herself and other places in Italy. So she's coming to us from, from Italy. Daniela. Oh, you're muted, sorry. There we go. Now I can see your screen. Okay. I'm not able to... Uh... Okay. Is already... Is it a bigger size or a smaller size? Uh, it's still the uh, regular size, not, not yet oh. the pre presenter. Uh, so let me... Start again. Okay. Maybe now is okay. Yes, it looks great. Okay. So uh, I'm dealing with the extracellular matrix uh, and uh, elastic calcification because uh, the typically calcification is. Uh, uh, represented by the deposition of uh, hydroxyapatite. That means uh, that is a mixture of uh, calcium and phosphate. So in insoluble deposition of calcium and phosphate, and it occurs mainly on the collagen component of the extracellular matrix. Uh, is a typical tissue which is uh, uh, mineralized is a bone. Uh, and of course, uh, in the in the bone, uh, uh, mineralization is sort of a physiological process. But we know that uh, in a PXC, uh, uh, the progressive calcification is uh, occurs on the elastic component. So is a, a sort of a specific component of the extracellular matrix. And uh, why elastin is uh, important? It is a key component of the extracellular matrix uh, and allowing many tissues in the body to resume their shape of a stretching or contracting. Actually, it behaves uh, like a rubber band. So uh, upon this, uh, kind of this definition is uh, quite clear that if you are mineralizing so uh, the uh, elastic components so elastin become very stiff so uh, the uh, its function is uh, completely destroyed so it's not uh, uh, um, it's not capable to uh, maintain the elasticity of the tissues and also, in some cases, there are sort of uh, um, breaks um, altering the functionality of the elastic component. This is a sort of uh, uh, comparison of the structure of uh, the uh, elastic uh, component, this uh, gray uh, amorphous structure highlighted by the um, red uh, arrow in healthy individuals. And you compare the structure, which is completely different. So the in the PSA, in the skin of the PSA patients, so the the uh, the size, the shape of the fibers is completely modified, and also there are a lot of mineral precipitates inside of the fiber. So it's quite clear that the uh, function of elastin is uh, completely modified. And uh, uh, the consequence of elastin calcification are represented by the reduced efficiency of the elastin component in elastin rich tissues. So typical uh, tissues uh, uh, with a uh, high level of elastic components is skin, blood vessels, uh, which are typically affected in a PXA, but also in the eyes. So the elastic component is not uh, very abundant in the eyes, but is actually, um, um, it forms a, um, a line a structure, which is the Brooks membrane, which is under the retina, which is very, very important. And uh, in PXA, uh, this uh, um, a membrane is completely mineralized, so it's completely rigid, it's completely calcified. 
But it's quite interesting the, uh, that elastin is very abundant in the lungs. And uh, uh, you do, in peaks say there are no uh, um, clinical phenotypes affect, uh, concerning the lungs. So why there are so many differences? So why, uh, despite the presence of elastin, and although we can demonstrate the presence of mineral precipitates in all the different tissues, actually not all the fibers are mineralized. And the alteration in these uh, uh, organs um, is uh, lead to uh, the uh, to tissue repair processes and in some cases of fibrotic processes. So that's why we have alterations in the skin. So that's why we have alterations also in blood vessels and maybe also the atrophic alteration in the eyes. Uh, the consequences are quite heavy on the elastic component because we are, are not able to reactivate a tissue elasticity. Because elastin, which is the major component of elastic fibers, has a very, very long turnover. So it is about 70 years. So that's why when we have uh, uh, altered or damaged or calcified, in this case, elastic fibers, it's very difficult to uh, rebuild new elastic fibers, functional elastic fibers, because we are producing elastic at the beginning during the first years of our life. And then we have to keep to maintain these fibers for the entire life. So that's why is uh, difficult. There is a, a, a almost absent turnover. So it's very difficult to, to repair elastin. So what we do, do not know, uh, or we, what we know in, in actually in big say. So um, it, um, we don't know actually why elastin, the mechanism leading to the calcification of elastin. Why, why some elastic fibers are calcified and other fibers within the same tissue, within the same patients are not calcified. So there seem that some elastic fibers are not protected from the precipitation of hydroxyapatite. So the consequence of calcification are different also depending on the tissue. So uh, the consequences are very heavy, very dramatic in the eyes, but are not so dramatic in blood vessels and even in the skin as a sort of um, dermacolor aesthetical problems. So which is the role of the environment? Because elastic fibers are present in the extracellular matrix. So a sort of environment around the, uh, the cells in many different tissues. And of course, in this environment, there are many, many molecules. There are also uh, many types of cells. There are many minerals components. And so, which is the role of mesenchymal cells? So the cells which are producing the extracellular matrix and also the elastic components. That's why we started to investigate fibroblast, which produce the components of the extracellular matrix that contribute to the formation and to the function of elastic fibers. And uh, although PXC is a, genetics, a genetic disease, uh, you may know that there are affected and unaffected areas, which are typically seen in the skin. And if we investigate the behavior of fibroblasts in affected and affected skin, fibroblasts behave differently. Fibroblasts produce different molecules. Fibroblast and maybe also some inflammatory cells. So the inflammatory process has been uh, so investigated many times. It's not very really clear, 
but probably it may occur also in a, a stage of the disease, which is still before the uh, demonstration of the clinical phenotype. And so these cells can contribute to a lasting degradation. And so that's why we try to investigate, to characterize all the molecules which are produced by a fibroblast. So we can cultivate the cells, human cells, cells from derived from the skin of a PCA patients. We can um, um, extract uh, all the proteins, characterize uh, thousands of molecules and proteins which are produced by the cells, and looking at their differential expression and the interaction occurring between these molecules, try to identify some pathways or involvement in different pathways that could highlight the role of changes in the extracellular matrix. Because uh, degraded elastin is more susceptible to calcification, molecules present inside elastic fibers can influence the different susceptibility to degradation and therefore to calcification. So try to understand which are the molecules that can protect some fibers in some tissue or in some areas of the same tissue would be important to um, um, delay uh, or to uh, reduce the calcification process. So there is a, a, the importance of the environment and also of the different ratio between calcification promoters and calcification inhibitors. Also, uh, promoters and inhibitors, which are molecules present in a different amount in a different uh, tissues. So um, uh, the, we are trying to uh, going deep into uh, this subject and also with the collaboration of many, many partners along the years from many different universities. Of course, we starting uh, uh, more than uh, or two decades ago with the collaboration with PCA International. And of course, I have to thank the support of patients, also the Association of PCA Italy. So I'm ready to questions if there are. Great. Thanks very much, Daniela. I didn't want to say that I met you when you were a child and now you're a full <laughs> professor and in charge of, of so many things. Um, and in our, our uh, uh, dedicating the meeting yesterday to Yoni, remembering that last year we dedicated it to Ivan and miss her as well, um, but grateful that these uh, giants in research in PXC have taught some wonderful young people because uh, we're, for me, on the second generation or third generation of researchers uh, uh, overall. So questions on what Daniela presented. I also want to say I've appreciated that Daniela's group has remained committed to uh, looking at what is happening in the fibroblasts um, and that the kind of uh, expertise that you have, Daniela, around that is uh, unparalleled probably in the world and really critical to understanding more than just the uh, mechanisms we've been looking at in terms of the ATP and, and so forth that the cells themselves have a relationship both to the environment as well as to what's happening in the body. And that's gonna be critical to our understanding. Yes, because of course there are mechanisms dealing to the absence of the activity of ABC6 and also it's transported the ATP. But it's important to remind that the amount of, the, of ATP that we have in the body it's huge. So we have tons of ATP because it's important for the function of all cells. So uh, if we, we have a, a decrease of ATP, you have a very dramatic consequence. So it's a difficult, so it, it's a different thing if you have a reduced amount of pyrophosphate, which doesn't mean at all that you have a reduced amount of ATP. So if there is a something belonging the circulation or sort of a general effect, which is true, but there are different sites 
where hydroxyapatite is deposited. So there are also local mechanisms which are very important to understand why you have some components and especially elastin. So why collagen, which is a typically a typical molecule which is mineralized, as you see in the bone, is not actually mineralized in the skin or the blood vessels of, blood vessels of PCA patients. And also try to understand how to prevent or to limit the deposition of elastic fiber calcification at early ages is very important. But when you have the elastic fiber calcified, that you have destroyed the elastic component. And it is very difficult at the moment to rebuild or to reconstruct the elastic component. And that is important also for the type of treatment, because as you mentioned before, you are uh, you need drugs that, that you have to lose for many, many years. And especially they'll be more effective if you will start very soon. So when your, the, your, uh, your body has still to complete the, the growth. So that is, uh, I think, the, the important to remind that also one of the damages of the Brooks membrane in the eye, remember that it is just one membrane. So it is, the lasting component is not spread in the entire eye, but the eye is a very close compound, uh, compartment. So it's, diff and it's difficult to reach the eyes. Uh, yes. So it is a, another big challenge of uh, therapeutic treatments. Yes. Yep. Kuhn, you have a question. Yes, I was just wondering, can it be that uh, you first need, for instance, so why is it in, in specific areas? Can it be that you first need damage to the elastic structures before you get the uh, calcium phosphate precipitation over there? That's one question. And another question is uh, completely unrelated. The, my, the mouse eye also calcifies uh, the Bruch's membrane. But uh, as far as I understand, uh, Bruch's membrane in the mouse is mainly composed of collagen, not of elastin, and still mineralizes. Uh, yes, but also in the uh, vibrisse of the mice, so you have a calcification. <laughs> but in the collagen component. Yeah, that yeah. is just uh, is the difference between the mice model and PXC. Mm -hmm. uh, probably because in the mouse model, you have uh, just uh, a, a precise uh, gene defect. In humans, uh, you have uh, probably a number of uh, modifiers of a gene, which can influence uh, the composition and also the um, the structure or the composition of, of the extracellular matrix is slightly different in the mice. Uh, uh, for instance, if you look at, at the amount of elastic fibers in the skin of mice and in the skin of humans, it's completely different. Mm -hmm. So uh, regarding the degradation, yes, probably degradation or, or we have uh, experimental data precedes the calcification. So after degradation, because of the um, production of uh, elastin peptides, but also uh, that can influence the behavior of cells, but also in the absence of cells. So in in vitro models, we have demonstrated that, that uh, <coughs> the degraded elastic components are more prone to, to calcification because they expose charges that attract hydroxy, um, hydroxyapatite. So that's why I put uh, a, a question mark uh, closer to inflammatory cells. Uh, in normally in PICSA, um, inflammatory parameters are not modified, are within the normal ranges but, uh, um, ranges, but actually we do not know if before the um, occurrence of the uh, clinical symptoms, which uh, started not uh, when you are newborn, but let's say around puberty, so in the years before, there are a so sort of inflammatory process. We know that uh, fibroblasts from PXA produce more, more uh, metalloproteases. 
with so a sort of subchronical and also oxidative stress. So a subchronical alteration favoring the degradation of the elastic component. Then you have a favorable substrate for hydroxyapatite deposition. Great. Thanks very much, Daniela. And we're out of time for your session, but thank you very much for uh, your work over all these years and uh, <laughs> what you presented for us. Thank you. Thanks.